Hey guys, welcome to Free Motion Fridays. So go ahead and let me know if you can see and if you can hear well. I'm gonna do a couple checks and make sure everything is visible on my end and we'll get started in just a second. Okay, here I'll give you a little thing I'm doing here. Let me show you. A little lotion, lotion is good. Gives your hands a little bit to hold on to. There's a little tack, you know, you don't want anything greasy or anything like that. But it really does make a difference when you're quilting. If your hands are really dry, they may not be able to hold on to the fabric as well. So we actually are creating sort of a little more friction that way. You can also wear gloves. People often ask me, do I recommend them or do I not? I do not wear them for myself because I have some nerve damage in my hands and when I wear gloves, I can't feel very well. I can't feel what I need to feel, so I don't. But I have used them in the past for many years and so for some people, they're very helpful. I encourage you to try them. They do give you that little bit of stickiness but if you can't wear gloves for whatever reason a little bit of lotion can make a big difference all right let's see okay i just want to open up our window so we can see all of the chat hi judy oh bumped you sorry <laughs> hang on Okay, I've turned that volume off so it will not be disturbing us. Okay, so I've done a little prep. We're gonna work on the center today. And that is this area. And I'll pull it up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. So I've done a little bit of thinking about what I wanna put in there. And I've also went ahead and I echoed this part. This is a half inch straight line echo. So I've made some center lines right through this intersection. And that is where you change directions. So right here at these crosshair marks, we're changing directions. And then right in the center. And oh, yeah, that's got a little thing going on. I don't care. It's fine. It'll all look great anyway. Right? It'll all quilt out. So anyway, the echoes, all of these different spaces are designed to give us areas to fill and areas to leave alone. So we will be putting in just a straight line, kind of a wiggle in here. And it's tricky right around this area because you have to change directions and you have to anticipate that. So we'll talk about that. And then this space right here leaves a little opening where we can put these in. And then right here, this will leave a little opening between the edges. Now we could fill it a different way. That's just what I've chosen. You can certainly do it, you know, filling this one, open, fill, open, and whatever, you know, it's up to you. But that's where we'll start. And I did finish up some of the quilting from last week, so I thought I would go ahead and I'll just show you the whole little section there. This is the one corner that we did with these little chain link overlaps, and then the open spaces and the little echo quilting, and just a little kind of scribbly arc in there. And the other corner, was this other side with the feather that we did right there. So it turned out so good, I love it. And I did put just a little bit of a 1 8 inch echo in there just to put a little wider texture on that line. Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk about the little circle first. We'll go ahead and draw that out. I left a couple of them. It's tricky because this arc is not even if you try to center it right on that line. So that is a problem. Let's see if we can get down just a little bit closer for you. Hang on just a second. Okay. All righty. Bumpy bump, I know. Let's see. I need to close a couple things here so I can read your comments. Okay. Good. Delaware is sunny and warm today. That's awesome. It's not sunny and warm here. It's sunny and a little cool, but that's okay. I'm loving it. 
if this is the center of this space, this is not a symmetrical arc. This one is a little taller because this is four. And this is made with a six inch arc designed to be a half inch here and vaguely a half inch on that side. So as you look at this, if this is the center circle right there, notice that there's more space on one side than the other. So I want to plan for that as I do this. I want to make sure that I'm taking that into consideration. So the center circle right here is going to be balanced for the space, trying to make it a circle that will fit from here to here. As I'm doing it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in this way and put my curl in, and I'm going to come out to the center position. A lot of times we talk about doing figure eights to make your circles smooth. But if I'm doing this little swirl and I want the swirls to go in different directions, then I can't do that. I can't do the figure eight. So this is a little extra challenge for you today. So think about it this way. Think about what size circle can I fit right in there, right? The maximum is from there to there. So that's what I'm looking for. So then this kind of has to be about the same distance. If I'm right here and I figure eight like this, I would go the same curl and back to the center. If I want to go opposite, I have to do this swirl and stop. And then I got to change direction. So instead of just figure eight like that, I have to stop here and I have to go the other way. Torch our right, curl, touch the center here and this way would go like that normally if I want to change directions then I've got to go the other way so you'd stop there go the other way curl the opposite way and here when we get here I know I can't fit another one in so from that center position I'm just going to curl right into there and create some little funky curly thing right there with my little peak right and the reason I drew so many of these in is I am not confident, perhaps, that I could accurately judge the gauge from there when I start. So when I start here, I can do it from the center, but as I'm working back to the center, if this is the middle, I wasn't sure what could fit. So I went that way with the marker, and you can even just draw some lines if you want to. We don't have to make the full circle. You can just kind of do that right? And then you would scoot over to the middle. But what we're trying to do is balance that space. So if maybe one circle's too big, we, we can't make the other one so tiny. So that's what we're looking for. So we'll do the whole thing on this one, right? Circle is about there, give or take, right? And we'll just sew. We're not going to have to make everything so perfect, right? And then we said one more on that side, a little one. And then we'll just come in to the center. Okay, so on this side, one, two, and into the center. So what that's doing is helping us guide how much space is available. And I might have trouble because I think I have different spaces on here because I was practicing, but that's what I'm going to go for. So when I'm coming in to this area where I'm on this diagonal, I know that I can fit two little ones and arc to the center. And then when I'm on this inner side where it's shorter, where it's coming to this flat edge, then I can fit maybe one and a little, and I've got a hook over, right? There's just not as much room on this inner side. So maybe one and hook over. Okay, so let's start. That's a lot of talking. Some people can do that magically, you know, without any markings or anything. They're just really comfortable. But, you know, we have to figure out how to get comfortable if we're not already there. So let's get down so we can see better, closer to our work. All right, I'm going to tighten you up. Marianne, I'm so excited you got your fun and fancy templates. That's so cool. That's not off topic. I love fun and fancy. Everything I want to make is fun and fancy. This is fancy, right? So anyway, let's start. I got a thread hanging out here. Let's see if I can get it out of there. 
I always want my threads under my ruler foot. And as we're going, when you're doing a circle, go faster. Okay, curl in and you can ribbon out or you can follow it. It's up to you. And then when we stop, we're stopping right in the middle. And I do think that can be a little bit of a challenge, right, to change directions, but actually that will really help you get better skills. So as we came out, we would have gone right down into the figure eight. And if we want to change directions, this one goes around and over the top. So we want to go the other way because we want our swirl to go the other way. Swirl. Oh, did I mess up? I think I did. Ready, so stop, go the other way. Oh, it'll all work out, right? Stop in the middle of the circle and arc over as if we were gonna create a little circle right there, okay? So we don't have the exact circles on this one. We just have some space. So I'm just gonna arc over to the middle and then I'll start my circle. Swirl and follow the circle back around to the center and change directions. Oh, I lost my thread. What happened? I broke it. I'm not sure where it went. All right, let me cut the bottom so we don't get trapped. Does that happen to you? That happens to me, it happens all the time. I don't know why, maybe my needle is tired, I'm not sure. See, look, he's just hanging out, he broke the whole thing. Okay, so on this machine, in order to thread it, I have to press this button, which locks the foot out of the way, but opens up the tension disc. Somebody asked that last week. They're like, don't you want to thread with your machine with the foot in the up position? Normally, yes, but with this machine, no. So what's the lesson there? Follow the machine guide. Whatever the manual tells you, that's what you need to do. Okay, so I'm all threaded up, and now you'll see, like, when I put that down, there's tension on there. I, if I pulled it, I, you can see the needles flexing. So definitely in the tension discs and definitely ready to sew. All right, let's see where we are. I lost track of my spot. Okay, I don't know why we turned this, but I did. Oh, okay, I guess we're over here. All right, let me see if I can figure out where I was. I was right over there, and I have to complete my circle, I think, a little bit. Because this thread is so fine, it's pretty easy for me to go ahead and just take a few extra stitches right there and just tie this off. Make sure you do tie it off. We don't want those threads coming out, so I'm just gonna hold that, put my needle right where I can see I last was, and I'm just going to come around a little bit. In fact, I'll just go all the way around. Okay, and now here we're going to go the other direction. So no figure eight this time. Okay, curl. Come back around the bottom. When you get to the center, change directions and go faster. So it doesn't matter where my swirl starts or ends. I can do whatever I want come back around this way, get to the center, and I would go down, but I'm gonna change directions. I'm gonna go the other way. Okay, so swirl, back around. To the center, change directions, swirl, go back the other way, get to the center, and arc over to the center position. Okay, all right, let's keep going here. I want you to be able to see what we're doing. Let's see if we can get you in just a little closer. And I think I'll tip the camera just a bit. Hi, Di Werner. Good morning. I just see some new, new people coming in. Nana, hi. So glad you guys could make it. All right, so as we come out here, this one is curling um, in that direction. So, you know, I'm not too worried about if I got it the right direction, but if that matters to you, you can go ahead and make a decision about which direction you wanna go. So filling in the circle and then coming back around, that'll make that nice 
and very visible. Closing the circle first, putting the curl in, and then a little extra stitching around to the center. And now, I instead of going up, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go down the other way and just try to make as round of a circle as I can. Put that curl in and come back out to the circle and come around to the middle and change directions. Swirl and then back to the center and arc over right to the center. Okay, so same thing. So we've got some fills right here that are all nice and ready to go and we'll just kind of arc over just a little bit from the center there and then we'll start putting that circle in. One direction, follow it out to the center, change directions. To the middle. Oh, what happened? I didn't change directions. Okay, if that happens to you, we'll just make the circle and we'll just make the curl go in a different direction, right? It's okay. That just makes it a little harder to follow the circle, right? So there's the middle, change directions, put it in, put your swirl in, and go back. Always a way to fix it, right? Here, go to the center, towards this direction, make your curl, and then come back and to the middle, and then arc over. Okay, so let's see, I think, should we do just one more? We won't do the whole thing. Okay, so again, coming sort of back to the center of the existing circle that you see right there, kind of coming to the middle, and then we'll start our circle. A little bit of speed, curl to the middle, and change directions. Curl, and back to the center, and change directions. Can you tell that I'm getting a little more warmed up than I was before? I think it gets smoother. That's why I think it's always important to practice some of these off of your existing quilt. And then when you're ready, when you're warm, and there's my leap over there. So let's go ahead and we'll tack it off. I'll, I'll finish this up later. But obviously this piece is certainly capable of being done continuous. So let's see, cut that thread. So we did our tacking stitches. I like about six. Silk is a natural fiber, so it does have a little friction against itself. It is not as slippery as polyester. If you're using an 80 weight um, cottonized poly, like Deco Bob, you can still get away with that number. But um, if you use something like really polyester or silky, what do you think? I know there's a lot of lines on there, but you can see it looks cool, doesn't it? And I, I like that we change the directions and we don't have to have everything so perfect. And I kind of like this little arc right in there. It helps fix the concept of us um, so right here, let me show you, this doesn't go all the way down. It goes from the center over. So it's not like we made a partial circle and we couldn't fit it in. We actually appended the design from the center right to the corner. And then this one will go to the middle and immediately swirl, right? So that just creates that nice little arc there down on the bottom. So let's see, somebody had a question. What did you use to mark the blue pattern? Uh, which blue pattern? The blue stitching or the purple line? This this for me is purple. Is that the line you're asking about? Um, these were sewn in with the templates, all of these original arcs. Everything that's in the variegated thread is all done with this thread right here. This is a 40 weight and this is fantastico. So I did all of the main designs with the rulers with this thread. Okay, so Marilyn, this is the, ten, the uh, pen that I used. This is Air Erase Marker. You can get it wet, that's why it says air and water, but if you just leave it out, this will actually disappear. It'll actually go away all by itself. I don't like to spray my quilt 
not because there's anything wrong, but like on a white, you, you might get a water stain on a white. So I don't really want to do that. If you're going to spray it, don't iron it dry. Just let it air dry. That'll be better, right? But these are going to come off. You know, if you just leave this exposed to air, all these marks will disappear by tomorrow. So that means I'll be sewing these today <laughs> because I don't want my marks to go away. Okay. But I use that a lot on white. I use any light fabric. This is probably my favorite marker of all time. I do have the blue marker. Let me pull that out. Blue, blue, blue. This one, Mark Be Gone, anything like that that's the blue ink, this requires you to wet the line. And I don't want to. I don't want to wet it. So I don't use this very often. And the other thing is, although this is very useful and I certainly have used it, when you get it wet, I have found that sometimes it seems like it creeps back. And if you iron it, it may never go away. So I'm a little bit reluctant to put this on there just because I... I don't want to get it wet enough to make it go away, all right? So I don't want to use that. Okay, so let's see. So I love that, you guys. I'm so excited. Isn't that like cute? Adorable. And I will tell you that when I used to do circles, they did not look round. I got better because I've been practicing. They were not very clean, and now they're, they're better, okay? Of course, having it be that light pink thread on white hides a lot, right? <laughs> of course it does. That's good. That way you can practice without fear. Okay, let's talk about this one that we wanna fill in next. I wanna do one section. And so what I'll do is I'll sew half with no marking because I don't want you to have any difficulty seeing it, but we'll talk about it right here. From this center line, this is sort of parallel. So this is pretty easy to sort of follow with this little uh, wavy, I don't know, what do we call that? It's not wishbone, it's not crossing over, but it's like, you know, a little ribbon. When I'm getting to this part, notice that if I just keep the ribbon going, it's getting really narrow. So I, what I don't wanna do that is, I wanna just start making this a little wider, but I'm gonna come back to this center and then fill that up like that. So this will be narrow at the bottom and then here, We'll go wide again, trying to come back to the center and wide again until we are this direction. Once we are aligned back on this tubing, then we'll go again, right? So right here, we kind of got to get a little bit wider and a little narrower there and a little bit wider and now we're straight again. Okay, so now a little narrower here and a little wider because we've got to sort of turn a little and then we can just do the ribbon like that. I'll do this last one too. We'll show it one more time. As we're getting to this point, I'm going to start making the bottom narrow and the top wider. So a little narrow on the bottom, a little wider on the top, a little narrow on the bottom, a little wider on the top, narrow on the bottom, a little wider, and we're we're turning, essentially. That's what we're doing. And then once we're turned, then we can be fine. We'll just go the same. And then once we get down to here, it's going to be the opposite. We're going to have wider here, a little narrow there, a little wider, a little narrow, a little wider, until we have changed. And that'll help us be able to manipulate that space where the corners are different. Okay? All right. Let's do it. Okay, where are we? We'll just start over here. I wanna make it so you guys can see what we're doing. Okie doke, here we go. Start in the middle, I think, that'll be good. It's a little bit easier, I think, to start where you don't have to deal with an angle, okay? And we can always feed the next one into that. Okay, so little tacking right here. went the wrong way but we'll go this way okay so narrower a little bit wider stretching it a little narrower wider to stretch a little narrower fill in the gap right there a little narrow and a little bit wider okay I'm gonna move these threads out of the way back behind there 
Okay, so let's turn it so you can see it better. Okay, so now we're on this straight area, right? So we can basically make it even, right? A little loop here. These are tiny, so don't go so slow. I think it's harder if you go too slow. Try to get a rhythm in there. So now, a little narrower on this side and a little wider over here. A little narrow and a little bit wider to get us back over to where we wanted to be. Let me cut these guys, they're in my way. So that's a way that you can deal with the angle changing. I got threads everywhere, you guys. <laughs> Let's cut those off. Well, he just does not want to be cut off. He's like, please let me play, coach. Put me in. Okay, here we go. I'm going that way. So looping this way. Up to speed quickly. Okay. And now we're going to start making the bottom a little narrower, letting the top stretch, letting the top stretch a little bit more, a little narrower, stretch that top part, and kind of get us back on track. And now we can just follow this channel. Okay, so it's not a long way before we have to start stretching again. Stretching the bottom, narrow, Stretching the bottom, narrow at the top, and then we're back right on track. Small movements, I'm barely moving anything. Big on the top now, big on the top. Fill in the gap, a little bit on the bottom and trying to get us back on track here for this straight area. So bigger now on the inside, a little narrower on the bottom. Bottom meaning towards us. Okay, and then I'm back on track again. Oh, I gotta adjust my hand position. <sighs> okay, yes, does that happen to you too? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. When you start feeling like your tension is getting really, really high, and let's see, I can't even see where I'm at here. Let's check. Which direction are we going? Okay, there we go. Oh, it'll be fine, right? It'll all work out. Just fill it in. With that tiny thread, nobody will notice. Just put a few thousand more stitches in there, right? They'll never find it. So big on the inside. A little narrow on the bottom, bigger on the outside. Okay, and then again, changing my hand position so I can be comfortable as I am moving. Ramp up to speed quickly when you're doing this design. You can't afford a couple really big stitches down there at the base. You've got to make sure that you're going quickly so you can get that nice look that you want to have. So filling in that spot there. A little narrow at the bottom, changing directions quickly. Okay, let's turn it this way so you can see it a little bit more. So, let's see. Make sure you can see your work. I think that's important, especially if your uh, thread is not very distinctive like this one. So nice and big right there, a little narrow there. That's the hardest part, I think, of this one is changing the orientation. So that's basically the lesson for this particular fill is how do you deal with those tricky ones that are not necessarily going to fill up the space nice and even. So we've made the transition here. I'm looking ahead a little bit trying to think about where is that bigger one going to be. Try to anticipate it. Going to bring my body in a little bit closer. I was starting to get my hands kind of far away from me. I think that makes you tired if you're sewing with your hands way out in front of you. Okay, so start making that bigger one right there, little on the bottom, 
big right here, little and back. Right now we're already into that next row. Okay, now a big one, a little narrow. It really only takes like two of them to kind of get you back to that next shape, that next row. Okay, so here a little wider on the top, narrower on the bottom, a little wider here, a little narrower there, and now we're changed directions. Wider, a little wider, and now we've already changed directions. And now as I close in on this guy, I'm just going to kind of figure it out right to there. And just tack him right in the existing stitch line. So doing these are a little bit harder than doing them straight, where the channel is the same. So if you want to practice first, make different channels of different widths, like two inches, one inch, half inch. Practice the different widths of the channel. Okay, that'll give you that opportunity to get good at them on the regular base, and then you can change directions, right? Because I think that's harder. See, they're kind of wiggly. You can see it's bigger right there, and then it kind of wiggles back. And then you tend to have a, like a little big one right there. Okay, can you see it? There you go. Okay, so, and what we got out of that is now we're gonna have a fill here and a little puff right here and a fill in here. And I don't know, I might do something else because I still, I don't like that the center um, kind of has this puffy nature. I want this to kind of be a little bit compressed somehow. So I don't know, I might put something in there. I'm not sure. But anyway, like how this looks. I love this sort of bat wing right in here. So I think that looks really pretty. So I've prepared just one other section for us to work on. So let me go ahead and show you that real quick. So that's basically the center, and then maybe I'll just put a little swirly circle in there. What that'll do is that'll take this design and put it back here, so it'll bring your eye into the center with a sympathetic design, okay? All right, so I prepared this area right here, okay? This is the six inch arc. Let me show you. Oh, I'll just grab it for you. The template that is used to create this. If this is the rectangle, okay, this is the center, and this is the center, right? So from this position right here, I had the foot in there like that, I'll just put the foot down. And I sewed this arc to that position, and then this was like whatever distance away. So there's a center line right through the middle. In fact, I'll just draw it visually so you can see what I mean. Okay, and then there's a center line here. So I just used that, and I sewed that one, and it's the same distance then as I moved up and from that position as well, I would do the same thing. I would do the same arc, okay? So that's how you're getting this little orange peel or whatever you call it, this little partial cathedral. And I mirrored it on the other side. So that way, when it comes into the center line, you're gonna get this really cool diamond. And then literally, I just echoed it with this exact template. I just echoed the diamond just like that to put a little fill in the center. So. My thought is that we can fill this area right here and we can fill these spaces right there. Or we can fill this in and I can just echo out here like this. So do you guys have a preference? What do you think? Fill in diamonds and fill in this or fill in the channel right there. You get to pick. Linda, I'm glad you love that diamond. I do too. What do you think? Should I fill the diamond in or should I fill the channel in? You guys get to pick. So I'm gonna give you like 30 seconds to answer so that I can see if you guys wanna pick something. 
still in the diamond. Okay, all right. So the diamond is pretty small, pretty small. So if we fill in this, let's do the markings like we normally do. If you're gonna fill the diamond, then this would be empty, and then this should be filled, right? So fill, empty, fill. So I guess we're gonna fill both of these. Hmm, I don't know, right? That doesn't work out very well. <laughs> Oh, because I would want I would want something in between. Let's fill these right here. We'll leave this open and then we'll put a fill in here. How about that? So fill, empty, fill. If this is filled, then this is empty and then we can fill that. Okay, that works out. Okay, I had to make it make sense. So let's just do something so random. And we're gonna use some of the same design that we already used today. And we're just gonna show you how to use it maybe in this little smaller format. And so you're gonna make circles and you'll put your little curl in and then you're gonna change directions and go the other way and put a plain one in. And we'll do two plain and then we'll do two, uh, one bigger one with a swirl, okay? And remember what we said, anytime we wanna change directions, we're just gonna go backwards. So one, you can do, there's your hourglass right there. And then if we wanna change directions and put a bigger one in, I don't care if the swirls touch or they don't touch. I'm not gonna worry about that, that's too complicated. So we'll put one in here and then I think we'll do swirl in there cause we need to balance it out a little bit. Okay. So here we'll go this way so we can widen that out. One, and a swirl. So I guess I'm just doing random. I was thinking I was gonna make a pattern, but I'm just gonna fill in whatever seems good. So here I'm gonna put a fake half circle, and then I'll come out and I'll travel here to put another circle in. And right here on the edge, we'll just fit whatever can fit and then I'll kind of come and put the last circle in here. And we'll just tack it off. This is a really fun fill, and it can be all different kinds of circles. It can be used in any kind of background area, and it's gonna be pretty quick. And the other thing that it has as a benefit is it is an amazing teaching tool. If you do a lot of circles, you're gonna get better at doing circles, okay? You're gonna get rounder, your brain's gonna get better at doing them, right? So here, I didn't worry about trying to squeeze one in, I just put a little half, I put a little half over there. Could have done maybe one or two there, but it'll be fine. I'm not gonna worry about trying to crowd any more in there, but that's basically what you're gonna get. So rather than put a billion different ones in here, Let's go ahead and we'll make it look like these go across. So we'll put the same fill in here and the same one in here. Okay, and what I'll do when I do it this time is I'll show you how we can kind of, uh, <laughs> I think I pressed the scissors button. You know that's a no-no, don't press your scissors button because then I can't pick up my bobbin thread. See, let's see if we can do it. No, darn it, I knew it. So annoying. That's one thing, I love that scissor button for sewing, but for free motion, I wanna put a tape over it so it will not happen, because otherwise I cannot pick up that thread. All right, so it doesn't matter where we start, right? Because the circle's gonna come back on itself, it'll tie itself off real easy. And maybe these will be slightly smaller. So let's do one kind of a big one to get this set the stage. Okay, and then we'll make some smaller ones. So one, because we kind of have to fit them into this diamond, which is tricky. Okay, so I've got sort of a partial, so I'm gonna gently come back over to this other circle right here. Maybe put in a little smaller one and then it's gonna widen out a little bit so I can put a bigger one in. And then half, right, a vague fake one. And then I have some room for a circle. 
And here, let's put another bigger swirly one in. So swirly. And rather than try to fit a whole one, I'll just put a partial and we'll just stitch right up the diamond so we can move over. So let's see what we can see. Okay, let's cut these threads too. So our diamond's already stitched in, so we can cut those threads now because we stitch right over them already. And now we just have a few maybe partials. I can't fit a full circle in there, so just put a partial in there. And that way we're not trying to force something in there that doesn't really fit. Okay. And then we'll just follow those around. And they're done. Okay, so right here, lift this up, release that presser foot pressure, and just kind of come over here. I'll, I'll I even go in the seam allowance, because what that'll allow is I won't have any threads being crossed over, hopefully underneath. Okay, so we'll hold that, and I'm just gonna go right into the first circle, make a little bigger one. Curl, follow it out. Now, some plain. Okay, and plain. And now we'll change directions so we can put another swirl in. Okay, follow it around. We'll come back over here so we don't have to fill this in later. Plain, partial. Come right into the next one. And we'll make this one a swirl. There's my figure eight. It's looking ahead so that I can find where they're gonna touch. Okay, so right here I'm at the center of that half. So I'm gonna come over a little bit on this one so I can get that next one right in there. Okay, so I got two plain ones right there. Let's put a swirl in right there. Around the circle. We'll put another swirl in because we can. Changing directions. Plain. A little plain one right there. A little plain one right there. And then right here, a swirl. And right in that space, I think I will put a little half right there and tack it off. Ooh, I like it, you guys. I think it looks pretty. So let's cut these threads. I do have a thread there on the back that I will need to cut also. Okay. So this is a very small fill, I won't lie to you. It's better, you know, for a smaller area, but sometimes we just need a small fill, right? We just need that. So that could be a really fun way to, to put just a little textural detail in there. And I like mixing swirls and curls because it de-emphasizes if something isn't so round and perfect, then they kind of have a little irregularity so it camouflages that a little bit. And let's see, let's cut that thread and I'll show you the back too. And it, it does, it looks good on the back, fortunately, <laughs> right? It does, it looks fine. Okay, let's turn it over. That's the back right there, so you can see it. So you get different texture on the back. The front is the needle going down, whereas on the back, the needle is coming up, right? Yes, you can see the diamond too. I'll show the whole thing, there you go. So a little bit more of the sort of half edges and not as many of the swirls right there, Linda, for that one. Okay, and here's the other side, right? But it looks good, I think. So at this point, I think what I will probably do on this one is just put some echoing in here with the same tool. So let me show you the tool that I used to, to echo it, and I'll show you why I used a different tool. Okay, this tool right here is the six inch spiral, and it's designed to hook your foot in and rotate around. 
but it's the same arc as the six inch arc, right? See that? These are two different templates. This is a six inch arc. What this does is it allows me the opportunity to echo my six inch a little better. So right now, if I wanna just put some echo lines in here, I can, I'll show you, we'll do a little bit of it. Maybe we'll do half. Just in order to put a little bit more texture in there. If I'm on the inside of this part right here, this is, some of this will be cut off right here. So we don't have to worry about, you know, tying off or anything. This is outside of the quilt boundary. So I'll just kind of stitch tack this in here, kind of get it all set. Okay. Now, if I lay this right on here, you'll see it should pretty much fit perfectly. There we go. Right here is going to give me a quarter inch echo. So I can just come in with this. My foot is the spacer right here. Then I would rotate this to the other side. And that's the thing I like about these arc templates is they do allow you to use both sides. So if you are on the inner curve or an outer curve, I am moving up so that the edge of my foot is touching the line that I just made. Once I do that, let me turn it so you can see the alignment real quick. Okay, there's my stitch line. You can see it right there. I'm gonna lay this right back on it and I can stitch back over to the other side, stopping when the foot is touching, and then put this on and align it right on the existing stitch line, and now I can have that quarter inch echo. So this is a pretty quick way to fill this, and it emphasizes this center space. It's gonna be like a little frame that emphasizes this part. So I thought that would be pretty simple. It's not really super dense or complicated. And if you want it, you can make a little different uh, spacing. So what we'll do is we'll do two quarter inches and then we'll do a little wider space. This will be a half. So when I come in on this one, I need to leave a quarter inch space. I'll show you with my spacing gauge, which is where, oh, I dropped it. Of course I did. I wondered what it was that fell. <laughs> oh, and of course, honey's not here and I can't find it. I think it went under the table, so we'll just have to guess. So this space right there, if I put this on like that, that's how I can estimate that. You know, I left this gap and maybe it's one stitch bigger. So I'm just gonna sew forward until I touch the ruler and then I can put that spacing in. Okay, so again, we'll sew up until the foot is touching. Just move this up so that I'm right on the line. And then this one is gonna be the quarter inch again. So touching with the foot, I don't need to leave a gap. And then we'll just line this up right there and we'll sew this out. So that just gives a little bit of variety and we can just continue filling that. My cut line is out here somewhere, so I may wanna fill it just a little bit more and I think that that just creates a little fun visual texture. I'll just show you, right? So and then we have a little space there. We could fill it if we wanted to, or we could leave it alone. But that's just a little bit more interesting than nothing, right? It's a little bit more fun. So I think that's what I'll do with this whole area, and I'll just follow the pattern. This one, we'll probably only get the two echoes. We won't have enough room for anything else, but we'll just echo these at a quarter because this is a half inch. I know I can get two of those lines and it may touch right here and you'll get a little gap on the inside. So I, let me just show you what I mean with that. Where is my pen? It's a little bit further than I expected. So you see what we did on this side. So on this side, we'll put the quarter inch echo and we'll get at least one of them like that. This next one in my mind, it will probably touch right here at the seam and you'll get that. So we'll have this on the inside and then we'll have a pattern on the outside and it, this will probably be cut off because these are symmetrical. I just don't know how much space I actually have. But I think that that would be pretty fun. 
And then you could also echo in here and, and put something else in the channel if you wanted to. I, I think that's probably a little overkill. I wanna to try to keep some spaces open so that we have the visibility of the texture. And I just wanna show you one other thing. I'm not gonna probably put another fill in this space, but last week we talked about how this was open. This whole triangle was open. It was like that, you know, there was nothing in it. So I left this one as a contrast. I took my four inch arc and I just echoed this till the foot touched. And then I just put this little insert in there. So you can fill this if you want to, or you could leave it, but I wanted to separate these two. I didn't want to have fill right up to the edge of this one since this is already filled. So I put a little frame here so you can fill this or leave it open, but I think that helps um, fill in an area where it had not enough quilting for that space. Okay, just like we filled in these bottom ones, we felt like it needed a little bit more because this whole part was open. Now those other sides are a little bit more balanced. Okay, so right now we're about 1050. So that's probably enough time for us to, to go ahead and stop. I don't feel like we could add something else. Let me go ahead and just tell you what we have left. Basically, I'm gonna fill in the rest of this design with the ones that we showed you today with the little curls. And we already finished this part and I'll put a little, I think, circle in the center here. And then we have this left to go. We wanna do something with this one and we wanna put the muscle fill in this area. Those are the last two units for this quilt. Um, there's always more detail that can be put in, but I'll leave that essentially up to you. I think those will be enough fills for us to say that this quilt is well quilted and it's got enough going on. So that's what we're gonna focus on next time. And if there's any other little details that I decide I wanna close out, I'll do those next time. But these are the areas that we're gonna focus on and then we'll be finished. So next time is part eight and that will be our last one. On Sunday, I will be doing something Valentine's-centric, um, probably just exploring some of the different hearts that we have with our Westerly line and just some fun different ones that we can do with that. And then on Monday is the launch box. So if you're interested in that, I'm participating in that as are many other great educators. And then uh, I forget what else. I think there's some other live stuff coming up on the 15th that's recorded and then live moderator. So recorded content with a live moderator from So Steady. And then we'll see you next week. And then the week after that, I'll be traveling. So there's going to be a lot going on this next week. So I'll try to post all those notes on my page to make sure that you're informed. And thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Have a good week. Bye-bye.